uh, this is a, a, a large topic. You know, how do you create paint uh, and to make it the most accurate? And again, it's really, it's playing around. I use, again, metallic paint, no matter if, if I'm doing a, a flat paint, if I'm doing a, um, uh, was it a pearl paint, a metallic paint, um, it all can be done with the metallic paint shader. So if I want more of a, <clears throat> a flat paint um, without any metallic in it, all I have to do is take your metal coverage and put that at zero and take your roughness metal and put that at zero. And now this is a, a flat material, a, a flat paint, not flat paint, but um, I'm trying to think of the right word here. Um, it's, it's not a metallic paint. Now, if I want to add metallic to this, I'm going to increase my metal coverage. And what does metal coverage affect? It affects the metal color. So let me make this color red. Okay, uh, metal coverage, what that is, is the, um, the metal color channel. And then your metal roughness. So right now this is really shiny. I'm gonna add a little bit of roughness to that and you'll see that, that the light spreads across the paint a little bit more. Um, so depending on how how rough you have this will you determine you know how much spread this color has on your paint. Um, so you can definitely change your paint um, through here, but there's always more than one way to skin a cat. Um, a lot of times what I like to do is I am going to make this red and I will make this red. I'm going to go into the material graph here, and I'm going to add a color gradient. Let me show you what this does. I'm going to attach that to the base color. No. I'm going to attach it to, sorry, the clear coat color. Let me turn this back to gray. Okay, with this clear coat color right now, it's at white and black. And what does this mean? Uh, the most important thing when you apply this for when you're doing um, car paint is you want view direction. And what that means is if I make this white a red, and I make this color white, whatever is directly pointing at the camera, will be the red color and then as the parts move away from the camera it slowly goes into the white so as i rotate this you can see that the paint is changing colors so when it's at the camera it's white and as it goes away from the camera it turns um, red why is that um, or when it's going away from the camera it's turning white at the camera it's red um, why do i do that that adds a lot of depth to your uh, your paint. So um, let me turn this into red. And I'm gonna make this red darker. So you can see now that we have a nice, nice rich red and it goes to dark and back to red because we're doing like a, a metallic paint. If I turn this off, Actually, we should probably do a, another material. Let me duplicate this and do it two ways. This one here, I am going to make this red, darker, that red brighter. Okay, so here is the, uh, the paint um, doing it with using these two up here, the uh, body color and the metal color, which looks good. Um, but when I attach this type of uh, gradient to the clear coat color, you actually get a lot more depth out of your, your paint. And then you still can control how metallic you do you want it. 
So as I increase the metal roughness and leave the metal coverage alone, this is getting to be more of a, a plain red. And if I decrease the roughness, metal roughness, you start getting more of the metallic color. So definitely when you're playing and creating paint materials, you know, use, make your color through your clear coat and then try it through your uh, base color and your metal color and see what the differences are. Um, another thing is don't be afraid of is, I'm going to get rid of this because it makes my tree really big. All right, so let me get rid of this for a minute. Um, so let's make this, uh, we'll go red again. And we'll make this, we'll make that yellow, just for funsies. And now we're gonna make the clear coats. Um, like the blue. So now, even though <clears throat> this makes totally no sense right now, um, you get a really cool color um, as, you know, depending on how you're looking at it, it changes color. Um, so that's a fun way of playing with paint. Um, and then you can just kind of go through here and you can slide to make different colors too. So again, and just, just play around with that and play around with this uh, color gradient. Um, that's always fun and you'll get more depth out of your, uh, your paints. Um, let's talk about clear coat um, roughness. Not everyone loves the orange peel. Um, I just want to say with orange peel, it's one of those things that you don't want to see um, unless you're super close up. So if you are doing an image that the camera's far away from the, ca uh, from the camera and you crank up that orange peel so you, uh, you see it, it's, it's really too much. The only time you would really see the orange peel is if you had a close up shot of the paint and that will also um, uh, determine on how heavy you have this and if I'm doing uh, orange peel this is going to be a very subtle um, subtle bump on that I don't usually use orange peel very often um, just so you know um, and another thing when it comes to flake flake is another funny thing um, if I go into my roughness here what you want to do with your flake is I usually crank it up to one and then increase the um, flake size. And again, if you're further away from the camera, you're not gonna really see the flake. The only time you'll see flake, if you see it at all, would be in the brighter areas of the, uh, the paint. Um, now, if you get zoomed in, you obviously, this is like too much flake, at least for cars. I mean, if you're doing a bass boat, this is probably perfect. Uh, but for cars, if you zoom in, now you're gonna probably have to adjust your, your flake size and the visibility of it. So you just wanna, you wanna tone that down and tone down your flake. Um, what's important here is you know, don't be afraid to crank up the, uh, the flake size, because that's where you're gonna start seeing the flake come out. And when it comes to paint, on cars at least, um, as this paint goes into shadow or in, the, or in the darker areas, you shouldn't really see the flake. The flake should be only concentrated in the brighter tones of the paint. And if you want uh, to see the flake a little bit more, you just want to increase the, uh, the flake visibility. The highest you can go is one. So I'll just crank it to one and then slowly move it back in small little increments is, uh, is key. And what I usually do if I'm doing a close up shot and I want to see some flake, uh, to really understand what's happening here, I will do a region and I will just let that res up and see if I can still see the flake. Or I do a little test renders and see what the render looks like with the flake. Because sometimes um, when you render it, this does smooth out a little bit too much. So you'll have to do some adjustments. Um, but that's just some quick ways of seeing what's happening with your, uh, your material, with the flake, along with your, uh, your bump.